Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon White version. Last time we went south of Driftvale City to the popular hot tourist destination that isn't very hot at all, Cold Storage. Aren't you glad that tourists like spending their vacation time here? I know there's so much to do, so many great activities like stopping Team Plasmo when they happen to be invading, which Clay wanted us to get rid of for some reason. Um. I guess tourists can spend their vacation doing whatever weird stuff they want. I'm pretty sure people have spent weirder, uh, spent money on weirder things for vacations. But anyway, in this time, because Clay made us wait, we're gonna make him wait. We're gonna go out to Route 6 and ignore the gym challenge. Because the rocks at the bottom of this river are pretty and unlike any other river we've seen before. Alright, I hear you moaning and groaning, but we had to explore this route at some point, And I thought it'd be a good idea to do it before the gym battle. Trust me, this route is worth your time. You want to head out here, possibly, maybe, I don't know. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Regardless, we have to explore it at some point or another. And I was thinking it would be good to do it before the gym, just in case you want to pick up something that happens to be around here. You see how that works? Being a little bit thoughtful for what you might want to do, just because, you know, I kind of like having stuff that you can follow along with and all that. And Okay, I'm going to stop ruining the magic by explaining exactly the purpose that everything that I'm doing right here serves, because if you over-explain everything, you kind of lose something in translation. Says the guy who likes explaining things a lot. Uh, come on, Hilbert! You're better than this! Even though you're garbage, still. Come on. Thank you. And now you get the critical hit. Thank you once again. Okay. We're probably not going to have Hilbert in the lead. I think you could use a little bit more training before you're going to be terribly useful to us. So, uh, let's, uh, let's go for Ottawa, actually. I'm hoping that Ottawa will be useful to us in the upcoming gym, so I think you could use a bit of training. Rock's, Rock and Terabyte have been kind of hogging all the spotlight lately. Let's go up. Hmm. You are an interesting case. Please help me with my experiment. Um... What kind of help did you have in mind? You know, the kind of chef that comes next. <laughs> Love that clip. Scientist William, you have a dearling. I picked a great time to use my <laughs> water type. Yes, I did. All right. Let's just go out into battle. Let's hope that you can somehow win with our battle cry. Ottawa! Next defend. Does revenge count if I don't take damage? No, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Well, I still did pretty well. I don't know if you outspeed me or not, but I do know that I can beat you with another... You don't have a grass-type move. Either that or you're really stupid for a scientist. Okay, fine. I'm going to make the end of your dearling all the much more painful. There you are. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> it's tough to get a result when I can't read what those results are. <laughs> uh, what do you say? I'm actually legit curious to what you say. When the wind blows, seeds fly. When seeds fly, flowers bloom. When the flowers bloom, we'll get seeds. Everything is connected. Confirmed you wanted to use me in a reproduction experiment. I am very happy that you didn't get the results that you were looking for. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna throw up a rappel. I was gonna start talking about what this route is actually like, and then the guy was surprisingly interesting, so that didn't really happen. Super rappels, you need to come up to the top of the menu ASAP. Thank you. This is the first of admittedly not many locations where encounters are affected by the seasons. T like I've said, um, day and night cycles don't have any sort of bearing on what the encounters are anywhere anymore, so it is just purely, uh, this is gonna be the most that you see of that. Uh, most of any sort of real time. Come on, bike being too fast and me just trying to see what was down there, not go over that. Seasons affect encounters in some areas such as this one. This is the first area where that happens and you're not gonna see it very often, but it's the closest thing to real time affecting it. Now, onto the encounters. Thank you very much. Lady, you're getting talked over. First of the new encounters is Deerling. Ah, but anyway. With a normal grass type, it gains a fighting weakness and a ghost immunity over what grass types normally have. Nothing too complicated. This can be hard to fit in on a team because grass already has a lot of weaknesses to begin with. But if you do want to use it, it is a wondrous user of the return TM, thanks to that same type attack bonus, and depending on the level it's caught at, it can already come knowing Jump Kick, which is going to be its greatest move for a good long while. Most other moves it can learn are special based, and unfortunately, it's just not that great at using them. On the plus side, however, it actually doesn't take until another Ice Age to evolve like everything else in Unova. Plus, not long after evolving, it's going to learn Horn Leech, a signature move. 
This is a 75 power physical grass type move that heals for 50% of the damage dealt. This is, hands down, the reason you would want to use this. Gee, it's almost like when Pokemon don't take forever to evolve, they could actually be kind of useful in spite of how obscure they are. Next up is gonna be Fungus. Here's a Pokemon that's very solid in verses, but not so much on the journey, though it does still have some positives. Impressive bulk for one, Effect Spore can come in handy more often than you'd think, and it resists some fairly common stuff. Beyond that, it has pretty shallow moves, and this brings me to the downright painful point that it doesn't learn Spore until level 62. Spore is a 100% accurate sleep move. Does not require any further discussion as to why it's super good. Fungus has practically exclusive access to this move, and it's probably the first thing you think of when you think of Fungus, but you're not gonna be learning it. What it's probably going to end up doing instead is using Toxic, spamming Protect whenever possible to make the Toxic do more damage, using Giga Drain to heal while damaging, and then using Sludge Bomb on everything else. Preferably while holding the Black Sludge or the Leftovers. It's great at stalling with this set, but it's a shame that it falls short of what it could be, because it's just that amazing whenever its moveset comes together with Spore. Remember that the Grass-type immunity to Powder moves also hasn't happened yet, so don't raise it for that reason. Also, there's next to no double or triple battles that you're going to be doing, so Rage Powder isn't useful either. And only three encounters yet again! I'm kind of liking this! Carablast! Yet another Pokémon you should only consider if you have some way to trade. It starts off as a young physical sweeper, but when traded with the Pokémon Shelmet, does a complete 180 and becomes a physical wall, packing the excellent Bug and Steel type. It's one of the absolute slowest Pokémon in existence once fully evolved, but its other stats are so ridiculously high that it doesn't even matter. Say it again with me, it takes a while to get its good moves. It's underwhelming at best as a Carablast, and while you could evolve it right away, most of its moves are unfortunately special based for a long time going forward. If you can tough it out, it will get Iron Head, will get Iron Defense, will get X Scissor, will get Swords Dance. Once it gets going, it's one of the absolute best walls out there. Though many consider it second place to a certain other wall that's coming up pretty quick. Down you go, just in time for me to be done with yet another battle. Or, no you don't. Okay, uh, sure, we'll deal with yet another temple. Cutting you down to size. Alright, I wanted to stay quiet right there to let you hear the echoed voice sound effect, because coming from something so tiny, to me it just sounds so overly dramatic, just... That's the kind of sound effect you usually hear on things like Hyper Beam or some kind of super powerful signature move of some kind. How many temple do you have? I should really look at the bottom screen more than I already do. Wow, okay. Uh, sure, we'll use Razor Shell one more time and two hit KO you. I could be going for Dig, but that would take two turns anyway. I know I would avoid a little bit of damage, but I'm impatient and have to have my immediate satisfaction with doing damage to you this turn, okay? It's just the way I am, okay? I can't help it. Still not gonna get that level 32. Ah, uh, hear the sad melody of total defeat. You didn't want it to go on too long because it depressed you a little bit too much, I see how it is. Rain is a wonderful melody that nature plays. It's actually kind of beautiful and poetic and kind of romantic. Uh, can you look the other way please, thank you? Because I see rustling grass and I want to see what that is. Oh, no, no, hello. Now I can get my level 32. Guess what? I'm actually gonna get to take advantage of- Well, there goes that plan. Uh, I got the critical hit, so I effectively did as much damage anyhow in the end <laughs> once I woke up. Level 32, that was kinda good. Alright, give me my item, I'll take my elixir. Getting a lot of rare stuff that you can't buy in stores lately, it's been kinda nice. And that Repel wore off at just about the most perfect time that it could have. I'll also grab a Hyper Potion, getting that absolutely perfect time to get that, no matter what time it is. And... Researching the year Seasons, the Season Research Lab. I wonder if Season Science actually exists or not. I know that weather does, but I, Seasons wouldn't exactly be the same thing. Research changes in nature that occur due to the Seasons. 
Consider the Pokemon called Deerling, which lives in this forest. Is this a forest? Its appearance is said to change according to the season. This characteristic is of great interest to us. We want to research this Pokemon and observe its seasonal changes. That's why we developed a marvelous climate control system that transcends the seasons and allows it to freely adjust temperature and humidity. Up to this point, everything has been fine, but we are very busy and we haven't really had a chance to catch many deerling to study. So uh, this is what we would like to ask you. First, please capture a deerling. Then, what is what is, when its appearance changes, could you bring it back to the lab? Then, when we've confirmed the change that the deerling brings to us, we will also go search for that season's deerling. How about it? If you don't mind, would you show us what Deerling looks like? Oh my gosh, you're not even letting us accept the side quest? We have to listen to all this again after we go catch one? I'm sorry I didn't go the approach of, oh, I already know that we're gonna need a Deerling for something coming up and just kinda leave it at that. I was thinking I'd, you know, be all, go all narrative on you and show you that, that that guy wants a Deerling before I go out and catch my own, but sheesh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> all of that to say, uh, we need to catch a Deerling. <laughs> <laughs> Deerling, meet my own quadruped that is our horse's prey animals. I'm not really sure. I'm pretty sure they are. We're going to give you a spark, hopefully paralyze you. If we don't, that's okay, because we got a move that can also take care of that. It just will take one little extra turn. Nice. All right, so we're going to catch you. You are pretty cute. And now you're mangled. I'm gonna give you the heel ball just because you're so adorable and you know, my quadruped that I'm fighting you with also is in a heel ball so it matches up kinda nicely. I got some theming going on here. I'm trying to make everything sound a lot deeper than it actually is. I just realized that's kind of a pattern that's developing. I love it whenever the glowy thing there gets stopped on that. Uh, the turning of the seasons changes the color and scent of this Pokemon's fur. People use it to mark the seasons. Okay. And sure, I've been nicknaming a lot of stuff lately. Let's see what I got for you. And the award for most awkward name ever goes to Dear Jeerling. <laughs> Hilbert grew to level 30. And on the way back, the scientist noticed me. I will research and investigate your Pokemon. So let me get this straight. The scientists in the area have Deerlings anyway? Uh that scientist is just messing with me, or maybe he just wants to hear himself talk a lot. You know what? I could believe that. I've had very limited interaction with the man, but I could believe it. Why don't you go discover something else? <sighs> How about it? If you don't mind, we show what the Deerling looks like right now. That was shorter than I thought. I thought it was going to go through his whole spiel again. Here you go. Check out Dear Deerling. Deerling's summer form. The luster of its body and its coloring is like a thicket in summer. The scent emanating from it is also very fresh and green. Thank you so much. I wanna go catch my go and catch my own deerling right away. Well, they're right outside your front door, buddy. Don't let me come between you and your vitamin D deficiency being cured. One month later. This is pretty. We should play with it in autumn more often. Well, deerling's appearance will have changed to reflect the current season. I think a certain Mr. Seymour the Scientist would like to see what it looks like now. See more of it, rather. And how is that deerling in summer form, even though it's autumn? Are you secreting fake humidity into this room to mimic the conditions? How about it? If you don't mind, yes, I'd like to see it. Or yes, I'd like to show it to you. Deerling's autumn form! The luster of its body and its coloring like a tree-lined road with falling leaves dancing down. The scent emanating from it is also like dry leaves. Thank you so much. I want to go catch my own deerling right away. That's what you said last time, but apparently it wasn't that great for you to still not do it. In winter, it looks like it's dead, right? Well, actually, it just looks like it has no soul. Close enough. At least the ground looks nice yet again. Uh, you can see that the time hasn't actually changed in the dates that we have seen. It's just, once again, the sun sets and rises at different times depending on what the season is. It's one of the few things that actually gets changed. How about it? Well, yes, I will show you what it looks like now. Oh, I see you're catching a deerling each time I do it. Okay, never mind. I can't really get on you for that too much. Deerling's winter form. The luster of its body and its coloring is like the slope of a mountain. The scent emanating from it is almost lo is also like fresh snow. Thank you so much. I want to go and catch my own deerling right away. Adding more to the collection. And in spring, it's pink. 
It makes more sense if you live in Japan. But hey, now you match the ball that I caught you in, so it all kind of came full circle. I will show you Deerling's fourth and final form. These forms are all cosmetic, by the way. They don't do anything. I would have mentioned it in the bio if they did. I actually mentioned that Unpheasant's form difference doesn't do anything, though, so... Hooray! Bad design, actually! But at least I retconned it here. The luster of its body and its coloring is like a flower field in the spring. The scent emanating from it is also very floral. Thank you so much. I want to go catch my own Deerling right away. Don't get off to this, man. Now, if we leave and come back... Ah, the 10 minute wait for spring was almost unbearable. It's beautiful and I just need to lay my eyes on it. Okay, that's enough of that. He has all four forms in his lab now. Oh, it's you. Thanks to you, we've caught all of the forms of Deerling. Now we can thoroughly study the relationship between Pokemon, seasons, and climate. I'm glad looking at my Deerling was so inspiring to you. Thank you so very much. It isn't much, but please accept this. Blair obtained a leaf stone. Don't smell me or my Deerling ever again. Totally worth the four months of real time it would take to complete this side quest, and the deerling above me right now with me blocking certain features of it looks like a Sylveon. Like, it actually looks like a side sprite for a Sylveon down to every detail. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Maybe that's where they get inspiration from new Pokemon, obscuring details and other ones and seeing how they misinterpret the sprites. Mm, I'm on to you. On to a lot of people lately. I'm figuring out the inner workings of this world. And this lady has waited four, has waited a whole calendar year to battle us. Let's give her a battle she will never forget. I will unlock the mechanism and find the secret of your power. Mm, sexy. <laughs> okay, no. Don't need to go back to hitting on every single woman in this universe, even if the scientists are a little bit cute, I suppose. Deerling! Who could have seen that one coming? So, let me get this straight. All the scientists in the area have Deerlings anyway. It's just that my Deerling was so inspiring and amazing that it was the only Deerling that could inspire him to go outside, walk that five feet over to that patch of grass, and catch four Deerlings to further his research. Nothing in this world ever gets done without us. At least I feel important. Give you another flame charge. And that's it. I almost considered using a Deerling on the- I was preoccupied with the mechanism, I forgot to concentrate. I don't have the level of concentration it takes to read what you're saying. I was gonna say, I actually did consider using a Deerling on the team for a while. Um, it did kind of go, uh, come down to the fact that it was a little bit hard to slot into a roster like I was saying, just because it has so many weaknesses. I thought it would be kind of nice with how we were messing with the seasons and how I was gonna show you everything that was a seasonal based event. Uh, that you would do that. And, oh, hey! Oh, wow, yeah. Some item balls on the ground are guaranteed encounters with funguses or fungi or whatever the plural is. Most Pokemon just use their name as the plural, so it would be fungus instead of fungi, which is kind of lame. I, I like the idea of fungus. I remember that this was actually one of the Pokemon that I was speaking of before when I wasn't really that into a lot of the Pokemon they were showing off pre-release. I was like, really? You have a... Of, of mushroom that has a Pokeball pattern on it. It hit me a little bit later, before I played the game, but um, or before the game was actually released, that it was the new fake item because it was all new Pokemon, so they had to have something replace Voltorb and Electrode. And for that, I think that's actually kind of cool. The fact that it's specifically a mushroom, like the shape that it is, having a uh, Pokeball pattern on the overside of it, and we're seeing all the action from a bird's eye view, so to us it looks like a Pokeball. It's a pretty clever take on that if they had to have something replace the uh, Voltorb and Electrode as a fake item. Meanwhile, Blair, who was able to see everything from the ground right in front of him, is like, why am I walking into all of these mushrooms like an idiot? Why am I never learning? I see that they're mushrooms, but I'm just oddly compelled to walk into them for some reason. I don't understand. Help her gaining a lot of experience. Nature! You okay there, buddy? If I use this, will my Pokemon also become energetic? I'm imagining this guy being like that episode of SpongeBob where Squidward is on the floor going, future, future. It just makes me think of that and it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, do you fight me? Now what should I do? The entrance to Charge Stone Cave just ahead is blocked off. It's because of a Pokemon called the Galvantula and if I don't ask Clay to do something, there's no way to pass. Again, trade routes in this world must be really horrible. No wonder the U.S. economy is in bad shape. Uh, here on Route 6, there's a place called Mistralton Cave. Supposedly, deep in the cave, you can find an amazing Pokemon called Cobalion, who is said to have protected Pokemon from a sea of fire in ancient Unova. It allows, if you can use a move called Surf that lets you go, go move over the water's surface, maybe you can see Cobalion. 
that's a pronunciation that I will not budge on. Every game has at least one where I refuse to say it the official way because it's stupid. The official pronunciation is Cobalion, which it's Cobalt. It's based on the word Cobalt. So why would it be pronounced? I don't know. Again, I think that whoever has the power to decide those things just kind of likes throwing in a few wild card pronunciations just to mess with the Pokemon fandom because they know us well and they know it'll make us squirm. And if I had that kind of power, I would sure as heck do the exact same thing just to bother people. <laughs> it's about season to go to the Celestial Tower on Route 7. I have to ring the bell for my Petalil. Oh dear, your Pokemon, somehow they don't seem well. You should rest here for a while. Can't go anywhere when you're not feeling well. Could have noted that in the time I was sleeping, this girl is still watching TV. Mister, here, have this. Shiny stone. That is used to evolve Machino into Chinchino. Said we weren't really too far away from that, depending on the order that you chose to explore things in. Maybe you could have done that. Moves for living. The move Sky Drop. Uh, you gonna mention how that move is responsible for a lot of glitches in this game in particular? Because that's probably the most noticeable thing about it. Hello, I'm Dr. Owl Machine. Sky Drop is a dramatic move where the target is taken high into the sky and then slammed into the ground. There is an effective use for this move in everyday life? Showing off! You could use this move on yourself, right? If you go fluttering up into the sky, you'll impress everyone. But what about the drop part? It's an extremely dramatic performance. Just brace yourself for the landing. Oh dear, that sounds dangerous. Ahem, <clears throat> uh, well, I, I learned a lot. Then, uh, okay then, everyone, until next time, goodbye. You're not gonna say don't try this at home, kids? All right, well, um, anytime. I'm willing to bet your show gets canceled within two years time. I'm gonna be timing you on that. That's pretty much everything there is to this route. I wanted to explore it, a lot of Pokemon on it, a lot of good items, maybe something that's helpful to your team in particular. I didn't benefit a whole lot from it, but I got to have a lot of fun with the scientists, and you know, that's enough for me. Hey, uh, well, now we're tied for seeing the same amount of Ice-type Pokemon here that we saw in the actual Ice Dungeon. Hey, Wire grew to level 32 in that battle. And did you think I forgot? Of course I didn't. I actually could have probably shown this in the battle with that scientist Deerling. Hilbert grew to level 30 while we were fighting some of the trainers and learned Sludge Bomb. <laughs> 90 power special poison type move. At least if Hilbert's not going to learn any sort of good physical moves, it's at least learning one of the best special attacks out there to make up for it. It's a great move, definitely a good move to have on your poison types, even though poison's not a good offensive type. That much power backed by the same type attack bonus makes it worth carrying. And you know what? I think we can test it out on the first schmuck that comes our way. I hope that that's not a slur. Uh, Tranquil. So you can see that that move's power being greatly increased. Well, okay, it's not really gonna matter much in this battle. I was kind of hoping that the poison would knock it out, but you see that it's actually doing a lot of damage now for a tank, and that's gonna be something that maintains. Just with how much power this move has, the fact that I'm getting same type attack bonus out of it, that's that. And I grew to level 31! Figured I'd spare you the backtracking after we had seen that new move. And now that we're back in town. Clay, it's a pleasure to meet you. I am Getsis of Team Plasma. I've come to pick up my associates who are in your care. I don't need no thanks now. Your buddies were trying to steal some folks' Pokemon. What's this? It seems as if there's been some misunderstanding. We only free Pokemon from wicked people. Well, that sounds real nice if it's true. I may not talk pretty, but at least I'm an honest man. You talk real nice, but what you're saying kind of sounds like lying. So tell me plain, what are you trying to say? Team Plasma also has an interest in Driftvale City, and we have many, many more members besides those who are here. Well, I can't tell if you're lying or not, but I reckon you won this without a fight. Rumph, fine. Take him and get. A decision worthy of a businessman called the Minor King. Your grasp of the situation is outstanding. Well then, we will be taking our colleagues off your hands. 
Ketsis, thank you very much. Don't worry, my fellow servant of the king. We are two of the seven sages, are we not? Well then, everyone, I expect that we will meet again somewhere. <sighs> Sorry to let Team Plasma go after you tracked him down, fellas. Say, why don't we cheer ourselves up with a Pokemon battle? Don't keep me waiting. Well, we avoided a fight in the middle of the city anyway. Still, I can't help but think Getsus isn't just an ordinary person. I'm off to go make my Pokemon stronger. I really don't want to lose to that clay guy. Actually, I'm gonna win my gym badge in a flawless victory. Man, you're worried about clay, yet you beat Elisa and Berg with the team that you have? Buddy, I don't think you need to worry. I think you need to have more confidence in yourself. Yes, it's just that strong that I am telling Sharon this. Anyway. We have been challenged to a Pokemon battle from Clay, but unfortunately, we're gonna make him wait. Why? Because he made us wait. Next time on Pokemon Black and White, we challenge the Driftvale City Gym. See you guys then.